hello guys and welcome to a brand new video today i'm here with avatar the last airbender book 3 episode number 15 and 60. okay the previous two episodes episode number 13 um we had zuko and ang kind of you know have a little uh friendly conversation they kind of went to the uh to find the fire like you know bending techniques uh because zuko and ang ang obviously did not know properly how to use fire bending and after that whole incident with uh katara he he his like you know his uh mechan his defense mechanisms or whatever you call it kind of shut it down and he wasn't able to make do fire bending kind of similar to zuko who lost his drive after he uh lost his uh, goal of getting ang he, he also wasn't able to use fire bending so they had to get a new drive which they were able to get and uh like you know we met the dragons and we also saw how zuko was able to get a new goal and which was the like you know which he realized that yeah i need to stop my father that will be my drive from now on and that's how i'm going to use fire bending not use anger as a fuel but use my determination to bring father down that's his drive so yeah they can pretty much do fire bending a lot better now and now i'm getting guessing zuko is going to start teaching ang more about fire bending that was 13 episode 13 episode 14 we go to the boiling rock to get back the um no uh, Zu uh katara and uh, saka's parents and all the other adults who were captured unfortunately they are not there but suki was there we were planning on breaking out but stuff happened uh, they kind of stayed for a little while and we saw uh saka's dad coming in so now hopefully we're also able to break him out as well uh so suki and uh, Kat, uh saka's dad uh hopefully this this is the part two of the boiling rock so i'm guessing we are probably going to get more into the breaking them out section and hopefully it is successful so yeah let's see and uh, okay so let's get started with this video now um obviously since this was like a two-part episode i'm starting part two of the boiling rock uh it's going to start from the you know from the chapter the title i think yeah there'll be no recaps nothing like that so like sync it like you know like like sync my video to in that uh, fashion so yeah anyways let's get started so this is episode number um for uh 15 of after the firebender uh god damn <laughs> after the last airbender why the hell did i say after the firebender <laughs> anyways so yeah let's get started so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right so here's the countdown three two one go god damn okay boiling rock part two <laughs> after the fire vendor what the hell <laughs> all right let's see All right, there he is. Hmm. <laughs> oh, damn. Well, no one looked in your eye. Why the hell are you singling him out? What the? Oh, that's why. Great. Oh, nice. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Imagine tripping in front of your subordinates. How embarrassing. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god, the same thing that Suki did. <laughs> well, you got tricked. <laughs> no, you ran into that problem earlier because you were trying to kiss Suki. Oh, oh, this guy. Oh no, he's a oh no. Not anymore. Oh no, I hopefully he doesn't talk. Oh god. No, oh, no. They're not here, I'm guessing. Hmm, because he's a leader, he's here. Oh, uh, the... What? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no! Oh no! Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, Saka. <laughs> uh. Oh no. Okay, thank god. Oh my god. <sighs> yeah. Oh no. Uh, make that ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Newbie. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, oh no, oh no! <laughs> oh my god. Oh no, my... Oh my god. Well, she is her knee, his niece, so... Oh no. Give some false information. You know, like, just lie to them. Huh. Oh no. Yeah, he. Okay. Well, I can't blame him because he would have, you know, been tortured if he did not tell. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he could have, you know, told her. But I guess she would have stopped, tried to stop him.
Oh. Yeah, you're pro probably going to be in trouble very soon. Gondola. How? Oh. Uh. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's kind of difficult, but will be effective, I guess. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. Here we go. How did he, they single him out? Like... I don't know. Oh, he's a newbie. Okay, I forgot for a second there. Oh, all of them are newbies. All right. Okay. Oh, no. Come on, dude. Lie. Good. Thank you. Oh, yeah, he had the beef with him. <laughs> Oh my god. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um is this my Oh no! Zula! Oh my god! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> my god! Azula! How did... Oh, okay. God damn, Azula always coming in the wrong time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, this is good. Ah. <laughs> but Azula's here, so. Oh. All right. Good. Come on. Oh no, oh no! <laughs> oh, poor guy. Oh no, <laughs> wrong person. <laughs> wrong person. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Please don't mess it up this time. <laughs> he knows very well. <laughs> he knows very well how to do that. Oh my god. Wow. Wow. Okay. That easy. All right. I guess you're in. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no. Azula's going to come and she'll be like. Silence everyone. Oh my, there they are. Run, run, dude. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh 
my god. Aw. Yeah, he could have. Uh, but uh, if, if he told her, Mai would have stopped her. Uh, stopped him. Tried to stop him. <sighs> yeah. Oh no, wait, what? Oh, oh damn. Oh no, Azula is there. Oh god. Wow. Ha! <laughs> okay, quick, take him hostage. Oh, I, oh, she would. Okay. Huh. Oh my God, I'm, I, I'm sure Azula is going to somehow interfere. But Zuko, can probably handle this. Okay, nice. Come on. Oh no, I feel like something's going to go wrong here. Zuko, jump! <coughs> Damn! How can someone jump like that? Okay. Oh my god, I think it's Azul. Oh! Yeah. Oh my god, here we go. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, what? This girl. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Oh boy, this is... <sighs> oh no. Okay. Oh, nice. Good. It's a teamwork. Oh. Oh. Oh, no, this guy. Okay. Oh no, oh no! Oh no! Yeah, but Azula's there, what? Azula's on top of there, what is- what are they doing even? Oh god! Oh. Yeah, like 
Are they mad? Are, are they not seeing that Azula and Tylee is... Oh, great. Oh. What now? Come on, do we have any way of... <laughs> oh my god. Oh nice, my... Oh, she also ended up betraying. Whoa. Nice. Oh, no. This is complete betrayal of Azula. <laughs> yep jump into the boiling water then didn't he say something like that <coughs> oh 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 Okay, nice. There you go. Oh, this is what I was. Oh. Oh no. Oh. Oh my god, everyone's turning on her. Run, run. Two of you run. Like you, you oh god. <clears throat> oh god. <sighs> yeah, we got Okay, I kind of thought Chitsang is going to join them, and he really did. <laughs> oh! Okay, I thought Katara will be angry or something, but yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, that's the end. Okay, it ended in a happy way, thankfully. Unfortunately, the whole thing with Mai and um, Tai Li, that was kind of a, you know, bad way it ended. Like, they'll probably be in prison now, but at least they're not dead, I guess. So, <clears throat> yeah. All right, this episode, um, episode number what was this fifth was it uh, yeah 15 episode number 15
so we continue from the previous episode uh, in the boiling rock now <clears throat> i kind of thought <coughs> in the previous episode that <coughs> jit sang i think that was his name he was going to join us but then as soon as we saw their you know like their plan kind of fail i was like okay maybe not maybe he was just there for a, for an episode but now we can see that yeah he really did join now here's the thing in, you remember in the previous episode he was saying something like oh like i won't uh, <clears throat> leave my girl and my buddy here alone i'm going with them so we're taking them with us he said something like this i'm kind of surprised he didn't even mention them in this episode he just like <laughs> escaped alone i'm like what happened like in the previous episode he was like you know he was like yeah i'm, I'm taking them with me but in this episode he didn't even mention them like i don't know <laughs> what happened but yeah he just <laughs> he just took off on on his own so yeah but anyways okay let's uh okay this episode here <clears throat> um first of all we uh, meet with hakora <clears throat> and um uh, quite a few things were happening at the same time uh, you know like saka meets with his dad uh, chit sang was interrogated uh, mai came in uh, in uh, like you know in, in front of zuko now here's the whole thing with zuko and mai <coughs> obviously i think the the one at kind of at fault here is zuko because you know like zuko did not tell anything to mai and just left like that leaving a letter which i think is kind of um a thing that he should not have done you know he could have at least went in front of her and talked with her now there will be like a what do you call it uh there, there probably would have been a possibility of mai actually trying to stop him and maybe mai could have you know taken more drastic step, steps and to actually stop him like i'm sure if uh, zuko went to mai and told her that you know what i'm leaving i don't want anything to do with this uh, nation i don't want anything to do with that i'm going to join the avatar if he said something like this to mai i'm sure at, at the, i'm sure at the beginning mai would probably try to stop him you know the whole thing with uh, you know like the way she said that you're betraying your you know you're bet betraying the fire nation <clears throat> she would have probably said the same thing there zuko obviously would have said that no I am going. I'm going means I'm going. He would have said something like that. They would have had a little bit of a quarrel or something, and I'm sure Mai would have, like at, you know, you uh, what can I say? Like would have tried her best to stop Zuko. She could have even went and like you know involved Azula or the you know Fire Lord to actually not fire lord he would probably went and involved azula to try to stop zuko like i'm sure like you know if uh, zuko went and told mai she would have tried to <clears throat> stop him however way possible even if it means he she has to take help from azula he would have probably she would have probably went to azula and said like zuko's leaving like help me stop him and they would have i guess been successful in stopping him but even even though you know those were like a possibility zuko at least i think zuko needed to talk with her because you know like <clears throat> they liked each other they were like you know like, like you know involved they were in a relationship so just you know using a letter like that to just like you know leave like that i, I think that was a little bit you know not something that zuko shouldn't have done and the thing that i said was is just a possibility that could have happened majority of the chance the thing that could have happened is that they would have probably um, i would have probably tried to stop him but at the end she would have accepted i think because the ending of this episode kind of shows us that the ending of this episode shows us that as he said that um uh, to azula that you're like you know um i probably love zuko more than i fear you like that would have happened probably and i think mai would have accepted mai would have eventually accepted and let zuko go <clears throat> so i think everything would probably would have turned out okay it's just that zuko didn't take the that path he could have just told mai that yeah 
this is going to happen and i don't know like it kind of ended in a bad way <clears throat> but yeah now here's the thing um this whole thing kind of did one good thing which is uh Daily and mai they ended up betraying azula in a way going against her which i think would be better in the long run i don't know it's just my thought so in that way you can call this a good ending but now they're probably going to be imprisoned like that's like the worst thing so <clears throat> yeah like a lot of things like you know a lot of good things happen bad things also happened but yeah now uh like here's the thing um since what can i say like I really never felt like you know like like their villains or antagonists I'm talking about Mai, Tai, Li, um, Azula at some extent as Az no not Azula okay never mind like I, I was going to say I also probably didn't feel like the whole thing like you know like the villains here are Azula and Mai and Tai Li you know like the main ones and obviously the Fire Lord though he's there but I'm not talking about him but what I'm, I'm tr i was trying to say is like i never felt like uh you know like i never looked at them as villains all this while i didn't look at them at like villains they were just what can i say they were just people on the other side and they were just doing something according to their own ideals the main person who is at fault here is obviously ozai ozai is the biggest mastermind here even Azula, to 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 some extent, cannot be seen as like you know should not be treated as a villain because she, in a way, is a victim of her circumstances. She just grew up in a very bad environment, and he she just became someone like her dad. So at some extent, she like you know she's also not probably not the villain in that way, but she is the villain of this like you know uh, of this arc of of this last season. So Azula's kind of in the gray uh, position, I guess, like, you know, but um, Tai Li and uh, Mai, I never saw them as villains because they were basically doing everything on Azula's, like, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? Orders. Like we, we saw their problems, you know, like they explained their problems. Tai Li explained like she wanted to have an individuality. You know that's why she took her chance to get out like you know get to the circus and like you know then took her chance with azula and didn't want to be regarded as part of a set that was her whole thing while my was like yeah my mom and dad were very controlling of me i had nothing like you know no uh like uh you know choices of my own so they were people like that you know like that's why i never kind of saw them as villains azula i can kind of see her as a villain to some extent but not fully so that's why you know like this episode after we see them getting captured uh tylee and um mai like you know like i kind of feel bad because and i never saw them as villains or antagonists so yeah that's just something now obviously azula i doubt azula is redeemable because she has gone a bit too far she has started walking the wrong path and she has gone a bit too far but mai and um Tylee, they had just started beginning walking the wrong path so they are still redeemable unfortunately i don't think anything can redeem azula like she is an unfortunate character i feel like you know like she is an unfortunate character her the past that she kind of told like the little grudge that she had uh, on her mom that coupled with her you know like growing up with her dad made him her into this twisted personality that she is now this egotistical like you know crazy person that she is now so that's why i feel bad about her she's an unfortunate character so <clears throat> but the things that she has done she's irredeemable she she cannot come back out of that it but my and um Tylee can come out and i think that's what they did here they took their chance and started walking back the path that they are going through and they probably are going to redeem themselves after this hopefully
So, yeah, like that's just it. Like uh, that's why I kind of felt bad when I saw like you know like them getting captured and um yeah. Now okay, so all right, that that all all of those things were happening. You know, like uh, Mai came in, like confronted Zuko and uh, the interrogation of Chit Sang. Um, them getting to know that Saka is like you know there's an imposter within the guards them kind of calling out all the people uh, all the guards outside and <laughs> it was funny that <laughs> chitsan actually like you know <laughs> pointed out the guard who had a problem with him that was it that was funny and that was kind of you know i guess good because you know that really helped saka out and like yeah that really helped and then like the whole thing with the distraction the uh, riot or whatever started and yeah and then we see like you know azula joining in or azula and tali joining in in the whole thing them kind of having a little battle on top of the gondola taking um uh, my uncle as a hostage you know the little fight that we had on top and it was nice to see uh, um, saka and zuko kind of uh, doing teamwork and it was actually really what can i say effective like zuko was long range doing stuff long range and uh, saka was uh, covering the short range so azula can't go closer to them saka would slash her up if if she did that and azula also has to keep an eye out for long range attacks so that was kind of you know interesting the way we saw and tylee and uh, suki were also fighting and i think their um matchup was perfect here because obviously like uh tylee cannot do the that whole pressure point thing that she does and stops the others from bending because uh suki obviously sides with martial arts so <clears throat> like that was like you know better i i think like um, as a matchup and like you know the little fight happened on top uh then they started cutting out the the chain or rope what, what do you call it yeah the gondola rope and in the end my coming to the rescue and helping them now then like i like i've like you know like when when we when tylee was there with azula and when my and uh, azula was almost confronting each other when you know my said like oh probably you don't know people as much as you thought you did did and that situation tylee stopped azula which probably gives I don't know, like probably shows us how in some way maybe Tylee was also uncomfortable with everything that was happening here and seeing two friends turning on each other. I think Tylee probably tried to stop that. And you know, that's why like the be the better thing here to do was to stop Azula. Because you know, Azula would have killed him, her, killed Mai with her lightning. So that's why she used her uh, that that pressure point thing to stop the bending and uh, yeah and that's obviously betrayal of the fire nation and they both of them got captured now here's the thing um i'm sure a lot of people in this episode will be like oh like it's good that you know they kind of like will feel, feel just like i am also like you know feel bad for um Tylee and um, mai and just like i was also feeling like you know like like yeah they finally redeemed themselves but now they'll be um in prison or something like that they'll be captured um i feel like uh what can i say like azula i think the person who was the most uh, i think hurt by this is probably azula because i feel like she 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 really did trust my and um tylee at some to some extent and like you know uh, azula probably had these two who were the only person she trusted at to some extent azula trusts no one and you know it's as a human being it's kind of sad having no one to trust you know like it's really sad like everyone needs someone to trust like it's 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 quite stressful if you don't have anyone to trust so the two person two friends that i think azula thought that 
where you know like her ally suddenly goes against her and that means in this episode she lost the only two people who she could trust she lost them and i feel like that probably kind of hurt azula in some way or the other like you know like we kind of always forget and we like you know seeing azula as that uh villain villainous character we kind of forget that villains also have feelings and azula is also a character like that who probably has feelings she doesn't like you know it, it doesn't seem like she has feelings it seems like she is that cruel person but deep down in her heart i'm sure there is something you know a little bit of humanity left in her hopefully so yeah like seeing her friends suddenly turning on her in this episode and the only two friends that she had it's probably a big shock and i feel like she was also hurt in some extent in this episode so that's just something that i thought you know like most of the time we kind of miss azula you know like we kind of uh what can i say like overlook her so yeah anyways that's just something that i think hmm, who knows maybe i'm wrong maybe azula really is like i don't think she's that cold you know at least towards her friends i don't think she is that type of an inhuman monster but who knows maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm naive <laughs> so yeah anyways okay that was it and then in the end like you know chit sang also i guess joins the gang i guess so yeah we'll see what happens all right so that was um uh, uh what was that was episode number 15 yeah that was episode number 15 so <clears throat> okay so we'll be re resuming episode not resuming but we'll be starting episode number 16 so all right so here's the countdown three two one go <clears throat> all right this is episode 16 we are very close to the end yeah um five episodes if you include this i think yeah <clears throat> hmm All right, let me just take this off in case I get spoiled or something. But yeah, we're almost at the end. I doubt I'm going, I'm going to get spoiled or something. But yeah, anyways. Uh, uh. So that means two more weeks after I will end. <laughs> I do plan on uh, continuing uh, Legend of Korra, I think. Yeah, so I'll talk about that later on, on the final day, on the final day of the episode final two episodes i'll talk about that on that day all right anyways the southern raiders <laughs> whoa what's happening um whoa what the hell? Just having a nice nap and someone suddenly attacks? Whoa, what the? What are these people? Are they from the Fire Nation? Oh no. Oh! I'm saving your life? <laughs> yeah. All right. What? Oh, okay. So it is a fine nation. Oh, great.
Oh no, Azula's quick! She... <laughs> oh my god. Oh my... Calm down, Azula. So much negativity. Oh, whoa, the... I think you probably need Ang's help here. Um, Appa? Ang? Oh no, they're here, what the hell? True. Uh. Okay. All right. Hmm. Oh, damn. That's interesting way. Oh, <laughs> nice stuff and then. Oh, there he is. Oh, damn. <laughs> Brother versus sister, let's go. Oh. My God. Oh, damn, that's cool. Come on. All right. Oh. <laughs> no lift for you, <laughs> um, Azula. Yeah. Hmm. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, this is Azula. Damn. No, please. <laughs> oh no. Ah, Katara. Okay, I think. I think, yeah, like, she's just still not able to, like, you know, I guess, forgive him completely. Yeah, that's true, you know. Like, and that's what I'm saying, you know. That's what she's actually bothered about. Whoa. Come on, Katara, like, don't. <laughs> Damn, Z Zuko, you're dense. <laughs> well. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
Ah, ok, saca. Hum. Yeah, like as she said, like whenever she thinks about the Fire Nation, his face, his face comes up. Like, like that's the only person she can hate. That is Zuko because she has only seen him. Oh no! Here we go. Yeah, this is what happens. Oh my god. Ugh. Oh my god. What? Really? Why did they even come? Why? Sea Raven. Southern Raider. <laughs> um. <laughs> Zuko, okay, enough. It's time to leave. <laughs> so he probably the leader of the southern raiders or something like that like i don't understand why even Come on, Ang. Ang, come on. Oh, but. Oh. Oh, yeah, he's right. Okay, never mind. I take my word back. Oh, damn. Come on, Katara. Yeah, she, he, he spent time with Guru Pati, so. Come on, Zuko. Oh, God. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
What the? Okay. Damn. Like, I'll talk about this whole thing later on when this ends. Like, you know, the whole thing with Aang. Like, at the beginning, I was kind of like, come on, Aang, like, understand the Katara. Then I realized what he was trying to say. <laughs> wow. Whale Tail Island. <sighs> All the anger. Oh yeah, what happened after this? We did not see. Oh no. Okay, so she kind of saw his face. Wait, so we don't know if she died. Wait, what? She could still be alive or something. Or maybe that's just wishful thinking. Wait, not necessarily that guy will be here, uh, but I guess it is the Southern Raiders, so yeah. Damn! <laughs> Woo! Wow, that's cool. Nice! Alright. Take him hostage. Or oh, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Probably going to ask where the... Is he really inside? Like, are we sure? Oh, damn. Okay, he is inside. Okay, there he is. Oh, the blood bending Katara. Oh, my God. Oh no, please don't stoop that low. Is this really the guy? I don't think he remembers. Is this really the guy? Yeah, I think so. No, wait. Wait, so... Maybe they got changed or something. Yandra. Four years. Oh no, so where is... Oh great, now we are on a wild goose chase. Oh, never mind. Oh, okay, maybe... This is the guy. Oh 
My God. Oh my God, damn, this guy is being... Oh God, Katara is coming. Damn, this is spooky. Damn, the rain. He can just use the rain. She can just use this rain to just, you know. Well. He doesn't even remember, yeah. Like, we don't even know if the... If, if the mom... What happened to the mom? Did she really... Did he really kill her? I feel like something else happened. Oh my god. That's why they came. Oh my god, that's why they came. She probably said it's me or something. <sighs> oh, she really did kill her. Okay, never mind. I thought maybe. Are you dumb? Whoa. Yep, it's raining. It's she's strongest. Oh. This guy. Yeah. Yeah, and don't no need to get your hands dirty. No, no sneak attacks. Don't you dare try to do anything. Okay, there you go. That's good. Yeah, that was a better decision, you know, like. No. Yeah, that's that's the That's okay. Mhm. <laughs> 
There you go. Yeah. Exactly. I was thinking, I was just thinking about this, you know. Funny thing is, Zuko just asked the question. Like, if... Okay, that's the end. If that really is the thing, you know, like, violence is really not the answer. Um, then what will... Now, here's the thing, you know, like, it's not necessarily that violence is not the answer. That's not it. Katara also was violent towards that man. We saw that. It's not that violence is not the answer. The, the thing is that revenge is not the answer, I think. That's probably what's, you know, like, like Katara also used, you know, violence. She kind of threatened the guy. Like, that's also a form of violence. So, you know, like, but he did not, she did not kill him because of revenge. I think that's the thing here. Like, um, becoming the, uh, what do you call it? Like, you know, being the better person. Like, as Katara said, if, if, if Katara killed that guy, you know, she probably would have just stooped. At, like, you know, like, she, what can I say? Like, he's not even worth killing. Like, killing a man like that, who is, as Katara said, you're a worthless, pathetic human being who is empty inside. Like, killing that person for revenge is, I think that's not it. Like... Like revenge itself is like a very bad uh, drug. Like it it keeps you going unless and until you find yourself with nothing. It just eats at you all the time. And like you know, like if if she somehow killed um the guy here, I don't know. I, I think probably this would have affected her in a wrong way, which would have been negative. And I don't know, like, that's the thing here. But that do pose the question here, like, as Ang said, that taking a life, you know, that's not the answer here. But what about Ozai? What do you do about him? You know, like, I don't know, like, I doubt he's going to, like, you know, even if Ang defeats Ozai, I doubt he's going to surrender. I doubt that. So you probably will have to take him down. What will Aang do at that time? That's the question here. Which I, I really am interested in what Aang will answer later on. Like I'm sure we won't get the answer in the next episode. We'll probably get the answer in the last episode of this season. The final episode where probably he and Ozai will fight. That day we're going to get that answer. What Ang came up with, and I'm quite interested in that because I myself also don't have an answer to this. And I'm kind of thinking about what is the right thing to do here, but I'm not coming up with anything because the thing that Ang says is correct. Like you know, taking a life and revenge in itself is a very bad thing. But then, what do you do in this situation? Like you really need to stop him. He's not going to. Just surrender or do something like that. He's not going to do that. So how do you contract the situation? I also don't have an answer here. I'm really interested in what Ang is going to come up with by the end of this season. So we'll see. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait and for the like, you know, answer that Ang comes up with. All right. So okay, this episode here. This is. I guess Katara's, um, what, what do you call it? Like, you know, uh, the, the episode where Katara herself kind of, you know, becomes relieved from uh, her heart. Like, you know, like somehow a little burden kind of came off in a way. All this time kind of like, you know, thinking about the, uh, having regrets about her mom and seeing her mom well, technically, she did not see her mom getting killed, but it was kind of like that. Like she saw her mom for the last time, at the last moment. So, that has been weighing on her for quite a long while. Now, here's an interesting thing. In this episode, I remember Saka saying something like, I also, like, uh, like you know, mom is also my mother. So why, why are you reacting like this? Why am I not affected like you? 
I guess that's probably because Katara was the last person to see her mom and you know like she saw what happened there. I think if Sokka was in her position and Katara was just somewhere else, I think the similar thing would have happened to Sokka, not Katara. Sokka would have probably been like you know like this kind of uh, burden with revenge all the time and Katara would probably be like Sokka, you know, a lot uh, normal. Like it's just because Katara was there at that place and she saw her mom for the last time and she knows what happens after that. She can guess what happened after that. So yeah, now okay, this episode. Uh, the beginning, uh, obviously Azula attacks. She's quick. Like in just in the last episode, somehow they were able to like you know give her the slip, but this time she's she's just she just comes here. And starts destroying the whole place and like yeah a little fight happens Zuko fights and like you know she, he kind of redeems himself enough like he's done enough you know what do you call it repenting yeah he, he's done enough of that and everyone accepts him unfortunately Katara was still kind of you know in her heart she was um uh, what do you call it not okay with this she was still disturbed so now here's the thing um katara the way she was acting here you know in this whole episode in, in the beginning of the episode um you know like she was lashing out at everything and like you know everyone everyone was like all happy with uh, zuko she was like uh oh like yeah so you guys forgive him that easily and she was like, you know, like she she really was not happy with the whole situation. Obviously, like I don't blame her because as she said, the main point thing here is that she trusted Zuko once. And like I'm sure I'm I'm sure a lot of people who probably watched this episode probably got a little annoyed with Katara in this episode. And you know, they'd probably be like, oh, like why? Like why can't you just like you know, like he as as Zuko said, like I have repented enough. Why are you not accepting me? Now we should probably look at it from Katara's point of view in this episode. Then we'll be able to understand why she was frustrated at the whole situation. Number one, um Katara, as she said, she trusted Zuko before once. And as I said, trust is something that's very hard to regain. You trust someone, they betray you you probably won't get that trust back easy enough. And the thing here is, this is not the first time Katara gets betrayed. This is actually the second time he, she gets betrayed. If you guys remember, the first time she actually gets betrayed was with Jet. Jet is the one who first, first betrayed her trust. That's number one. The, the number one time she gets her trust betrayed. She recovers from that. And then again, in Ba Sing Se, she decides to trust Zuko even like you know like at such extent that she says that i'm going to heal your wound that's the amount of trust and you know like uh, uh what do you call it friendship that she showed zuko which again zuko crushed zuko betrayed this is the second time her trust gets betrayed so i don't think anyone can blame her at this point the way she was reacting to this so yeah that's what's happening here that's why katara was so annoyed and frustrated and she was like yeah like you guys are like you know like having fun with zuko i'm not having any fun and she just went away so and when zuko said that everyone like you know you trust me what's the problem with you and as soon as katara said that oh really like i trusted you before all before all of them trusted you so and you're the one who broke that zuko kind of shuts up at that moment because he realizes what <laughs> what is the actual problem here and yeah that is the truth now that's like a little portion of the rage that katara had inside her another big portion of the rage that katara had inside her was the fact that um zuko was a fire nation person and as she said before whenever she like you know thinks about a firebender zuko's face comes up because he's the only firebender that they personally know so obviously she's going to associate firebenders with him and like you know like that the same firebender who killed her mom in front of her almost in front of her when she was a child like you know like that one person from the firebender uh, fire nation is 
now their friend and it kind of probably doesn't sit well with her so that's that was like another big part of the problem that is her previous rage her um uh, re the thing like you know the the, the revenge that uh, what do you call it the feelings of revenge that she had in her heart that's also that was a bigger part of the problem she she was not really happy with this whole situation because you know like she got reminded of her mom all the time and she got reminded that she was not strong enough to do anything to help her at that moment so that's the two big reasons so like if anyone is like you know unable to understand why katara was so like you know like unforgiving in this episode just try to imagine it like this you know just put on her shoes and you'll be able to see things from her perspective and that's why i'm saying i don't blame her like it's natural like she got betrayed two times but not any normal betrayal but betraying of trust which is like one of the biggest thing so that and also the previous rage from like you know because her mom died in the hands of a fiber bender those two were the bigger things now here's the thing that was the first portion and then after that after uh um what's zuko after zuko under like you know talks with saka and asks about the uh raid day of the day of the raid um i guess to know that it's the southern what was what did they call it southern southern raiders i think was that it southern raiders, raiders yeah as soon as he got to know that it was the sound of raiders, she, he told Katara and Katara just jumped on that opportunity. She was like, yeah, let's go. Now, here comes the next part where Aang tries to stop them. Now, here's the thing. At the beginning when Aang was like, uh, you know, like, I think the way Aang kind of explained it at the beginning was kind of a little bit insensitive in a way. That's why I also kind of, um, you know, I was like, I was kind of like, why uh, Aang? Like, try to understand it from Katara's perspective. But then I realized that's not what Aang was trying to say. I think Aang said something like, um, yeah, like, what, what did he say? Like, where is it? Okay, here it is. Um, what exactly do you think this will accomplish? The whole revenge thing when Katara says, Aang says that what exactly do you think this will accomplish? Now, I think this sentence is a little bit insensitive in a way. And the way he told that is kind of, I don't know, weird. That's why I was also like, like Aang, like I tried to understand it from Katara's point of view. But then as, as he elaborates in that, I, I understand what he's trying to say. And I, at that time, it kind of struck me. I realized, I remembered that he he actually was a pupil of Guru Patik for a moment of time. And this is one of the things that Guru Patik taught him that forgiveness and like, you know, give, what do you call it? Like not, um, you know, not trying to take revenge, this whole thing. So that's why I realized what Aang was trying to say at that moment. And like, now here's the thing. At this moment, I was kind of like, you know, 50-50. One part of me was saying that, yeah, Aang is right. And then another part of me was saying that maybe Katara do, does need this, you know, because otherwise she won't be able to, uh, you know, like her, the rage in her heart won't be able to be, won't be able to be quenched or whatever. So that was what was happening. Like I was kind of 50-50 thinking about it. But then the thing that Aang said at the end was a nice compromise that he came up with. He was like, you know what? Okay, you go. You need to do this because otherwise, yeah, it'll be a problem. You won't be yourself anymore. So go uh, confront him, fight him, do whatever the hell you want to, but don't kill him. Just scare him off, fight him, uh, confront him. Uh, you know, like all those stuff, just do and don't you know like don't what do you call it don't just dirty your hands and kill him don't stoop that low and i think that was like a good enough compromise i guess and like at the beginning katara was like i'll think about it later 
but as I'm guessing, you know, as, as they slowly, slowly went there, like at the beginning, the, the, the ship that they attacked, obviously the guy was not um, uh, the original guy. And then they come to the, the little island, I think, whatever. I think he's retired or something. <laughs> Damn. Like, imagine being, a, you know, like at such, such a, uh, you know, like in one of the Fire Nation army. And then after you retire, there's like... <laughs> You have to pull out, <laughs> pull out crops from your field. Just, you know, I don't know. Like, damn. But anyways, um, he just, he was there, and I think like all, like all the time that she was going in the the transportation time it took, she probably thought a lot about the whole thing that Ang said, and she also probably realized that yeah, like. I should just confront him and just end this chapter you know he's not even worth the time he's not even worth the time that i'm spending um trying to take revenge on him he's not worth that time even so let's just end this chapter she goes and she attacks him scares him and says that now here's the thing the guy was pretty uh, like i don't know like I, I i don't know why but i i thought that maybe this guy changed or something unfortunately i was wrong you know he he's still the same scumbag i guess because he said something like oh since i took your mother from you why don't you take my mother like what type of a nasty human being even says something like that like what's wrong with you so that's why Katara said that yeah you you're not even worth it you know you're a pathetic empty human being so yeah like i don't care just do whatever the hell you want to and just don't come you know like just don't try to get in our way again and uh, yeah now i don't know why like in the in the little flashback that we saw the way katara kind of explained it was a little bit i don't know like a little bit unusual like he, she said something like uh like yeah we saw the guy there uh you know mom was there mom saved me and mom told me to go away i went away i, I brought dad when i came there was no one you know mom was not there she said something like that and i thought at that time i thought wait a minute does that mean like they took her prisoner or something like did they take her hostage or something like and then i was thinking maybe she's alive or something you know but then I just realized that after that whole situation, when we get a little flashback again, when he, he, she confronts that guy and we see what actually happened, like, you know, when the mom said that, yeah, I'm the waterbender. And uh, he said that we are, we, we're not taking any prisoners. And that probably meant that, yeah, he killed her then and there. So then I realized that at that time, Katara was very small. She was so small that she probably didn't even realize what happened like you know the way she explained the whole situation she said that when we came back mom was not there that doesn't mean like mom was not there that probably means that like she she wasn't able to properly register what happened after that which probably implies that her mom died like she was she was a child at that moment always she won't be able to understand and comprehend most of the things so yeah that's what happened probably like i took her wordings at face value i was like oh so she was not there does that mean she was being taken prisoner or something no she really died at that moment the, the guy really killed her and uh, yeah that's just you know and the, the, like I, I was also kind of wondering i was like why did they like suddenly attack the water village then when they were explaining the whole situation and then Katara like you know they said that oh where's the waterbender I realized that okay they were actually trying to um get the waterbender and uh, Katara's mom basically kind of sacrificed herself to save Katara at that moment and yeah that was it Katara comes back thankfully she you know she did not like the, for a moment, I was kind of thinking, like, is she going to go that low? Like, when he started, she started bloodbending. I was like, no, Katara, don't just, you know, like, don't use this power for revenge. Like, 
I don't know, like she was walking a thin line in this episode. If she somehow used blood bending to kill that guy, you know, she, that would have been it. Because if you guys remember in the uh, blood bending episode, I said something like she can use blood bending to help people. But if he, she somehow uses blood bending for a negative purpose, that is killing or for revenge, you know, I think that'll probably, uh, I don't know, like, that'll probably break something within her and she'll probably won't be able to get her humanity back or something you know she'll become the same like um what's the name of the the lady the old lady i forgot the name of the, of the old lady what was her name uh, the bloodbender lady uh, i forgot anyways that lady she would probably become like her after that like use bloodbending to help people or to like you know like for, for something else for, for the greater good like for example constraining people you know like if fire bending starts attacking fire bending starts attacking you just const like, you know just stop them within their place and don't let them go don't let them advance do something like that but if you like you know use blood bending for revenge yeah that's not it it'll probably make you start walking a very dark path and you don't want that katara that's what the bloodbender lady wanted you to do you know that's what she her main goal was to drag katara down to that dark path so don't do that that'll probably break something within you which won't be repairable and you'll start walking a path where which is just you know like which is bad and you don't want that so yeah and in the end katara forgives tuko right everything's well and good so yeah that was episode number six and we're almost at the end four more episodes left and everything will happen within that four episodes so yeah we'll see so that's it guys so that's my reaction to avatar the last airbender book three episode number 14 um 15 and 16 so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll definitely check them out so that's it and thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of after the last airbender book three until then goodbye and have a nice day